Is that an amazing sight or what? Just beautiful. Alright, I'm going to be a bit nostalgic here for a little while. This is Crisis. It came out in 2007. You know, a long time ago, I used to be incredibly obsessed with graphics. I still really, really like graphics in games. Just fidelity and raw power in the, new ex the newest graphics cards. But I was especially obsessed with graphics a while ago, back around the time this game came out. In fact, I was so obsessed with graphics that I actually built my computer in 2007 specifically to run this very game at the highest settings possible. I was so obsessed with it. I'd seen so many tech demos and trailers and screenshots and I was just obsessed with getting the best graphics possible. It just looked amazing. And I built an extremely expensive computer. I believe it cost over $2,000, actually. <laughs> oh god. It's disturbing to even think of paying that much for a computer. There goes the jet. Goodbye. Yes, I built a computer specifically to run this game at the highest settings. And frankly, it was one of the worst computers I've ever built. In fact, it probably was the worst in terms of overall stability and how happy I was with it. I remember it. the graphics card was an 8800 GTX, an NVIDIA 8800 GTX. It was extremely expensive. I believe it was over $400 for that graphics card. Yes, that was one hell of an expensive graphics card. It was... It took a shit ton of power. A hell of a lot of power. It was extremely long and barely fit inside of the case. It was a really inefficient, power-hungry beast. And also, it was really, really loud. <laughs> I remember the CPU was a Q6600, an Intel Q6600. That was one of the first kind of affordable quad-core CPUs, I believe. I think, that's somewhere, I think it was over $300. Somewhere between $300 and $400 for that. Yeah. I remember it had 4 gigabytes of memory, which at the time was perfectly fine, but very quickly that became quite a problem. I also remember. You know what it also had? Now don't... Don't, don't throw up, okay? Try to control yourself. Don't get too sick. Don't scream and claw your eyes. It had... Windows Vista. Ugh. Windows Vista 32-bit. As if it couldn't get any worse than Windows Vista it was 32-bit. What can I say? At the time, you didn't really need 64-bit. But once again, just like the memory issue, it kind of quickly became a problem. A few years later on, I think. That was one of the longest computers I've ever owned. I owned it for a really long time. Probably about four or five years. Yeah, probably about five years. Somewhere between four and five. And it was one of the most unstable pieces of shit I ever owned. It crashed all the time. Probably This is probably all thanks to having Windows Vista, of course. It crashed all the time. I remember pretty much any time I tried to use a video editing program of any sort, it would blue screen. That was fun. <laughs> thanks, computer. It was a piece of crap. It really was. I also remember the first time I tried to install Windows Vista on the computer. The very, just when I was first building the computer and putting it together and I was installing Vista. I remember it, um, it blue screened actually while installing Vista. Yeah. And then somehow I, I think I just restarted my computer and it somehow just like kept installing or finished just fine and, and yeah. I guess that was a sign of things to come. <laughs> it was one of the crappiest computers I ever owned. But um, at the time it was pretty much the one of the best things you could possibly get. Yes, I built it to run this game at the best settings possible. And the funny thing is, it didn't even run it all that well. Not because it was, you know, a, not a very powerful computer or because Crisis was unoptimized or anything like that. No, I think it's just because Crisis was so freaking ahead of its time that even one of the best computers of the time couldn't run it at the highest settings. I remember I actually couldn't run it at the highest settings. I had to turn it down slightly, a little bit from very high. And I think I had to turn off anti-aliasing as well, or maybe put it on two times. Which was really disappointing. The graphics still blew me away, of course, but I was so obsessed with the graphics that I actually played it at settings that were... Well, it ran between 25 and 30 FPS. 
which for a first person shooter is bordering on unplayable. But again, I was so obsessed with the graf oh, so obsessed with the graphics, I didn't even care. <laughs> it was like as long as it's even barely playable, I'm going to crank this thing as high as possible. It was ridiculous. I don't know what the hell I was thinking, building that computer or playing it like that. Really wasn't good for the gameplay experience. And damn, was that computer a waste of money. Jesus. So yeah, I was really obsessed with graphics. Really, really obsessed. Okay, I'm going to move the view now. I've avoided moving the view because I know after YouTube gets its hand on hands on the video and compresses it to hell, that as soon as I start moving, everything's going to look all horribly pixelated and whatnot. So I wanted you to really take in the view in the best way possible. But let's start moving around. This game came out in 2007. That's about seven years ago. And I just want to revisit it and just look at how incredible the graphics still are. This game, despite being about seven years old, is still better looking than many games released today. It is freaking incredible. It really is one hell of a graphical achievement. Unfortunately, it didn't achieve much else. But damn, is it one hell of a graphical achievement. Let's just go back here. Into the forest. Okay, just look at this. I'm not going to move the view so that hopefully it looks okay after video compression and all of that. Just look at this, like, what they've managed to do in this game in terms of the jungle is incredible. That's always kind of been the Crytek and the Crisis thing, right? And the Far Cry thing is settings on tropical sort of islands with lots of lush forests. And that's certainly true here. And man, did they nail it. I don't think I've ever seen, I don't think I've ever seen, ever, anywhere, ever, a game with a more lush forest, a lush vegetation system, as Crisis. Look at this, there's so much vegetation on the scene, in the scene, you almost can't even see the ground. That is amazing. It, it really is incredible. And just dynamic lighting everywhere, everything's moving around, and it's not just static vegetation either. You can actually push around the vegetation. It actually reacts to you. Look at this. How cool is that? It's amazing. The vegetation is just astounding. That was a super jump, by the way. Because I've got my maximum suit. Even today, it's still got great dynamic lighting. Just, it, it really is astounding. It's amazing to think this came out seven years ago. You can see some signs of the age. Especially in texture quality. You know, go up to a rock like that. And, ugh. Not the greatest texture resolution. But, my god. In most ways, it is just gorgeous. incredible. Almost makes me think, you know what? It's no wonder I built a computer specifically to run this. Just because of how it looks. Because it really does still look incredible. But there's, there's also some other really cool stuff. Ugh, I actually just clipped through my own foot. It's weird. Yeah, there's some other incredible stuff. The amount of attention to detail in the destructibility is also astounding. Let me demonstrate... Let's cloak here. Let's be all sneaky sneaky. Hi. Goodbye. Hello there. What seems to be the problem, sir? <laughs> oh god, I'm almost dead. What the hell did that person do to me? Okay, is anybody shooting at me? No, that seems to be it. Okay, cool. Yeah, so let me demonstrate some of the amazing, just freaking amazing attention to detail in the destructibility of the environments. You know how a lot of shooters today, 
are just corridor shooters. You go down a corridor, you do scripted cutscenes and whatnot. This game is amazing at having an open environment that is so different from a lot of today's shooters. So let me just demonstrate the destructibility. Oh! Well, I think that gun is going to demonstrate some of the destructibility for me. Hold on. By the way, bullets actually have travel time. Which is pretty cool. It's a relatively hardcore thing to simulate. I'm not sure if there's bullet drop. Come on. Fuck. I'm out. Pistol. Pistol the <laughs> to the rescue. Yeah, it's not gonna work. Anyway, like I was saying, let me demonstrate the destructibility. So let me turn on super strength and let me punch everything. Yes, you can break apart fences. Look at these tires. You might think, huh, that's, you know, it's a static object of tires. Nope. They're all separate physics objects. I can break that. I can break this. I can break the entire building. The entire building can be broken. Ooh, guns. I like guns. I can shoot things with guns. There's some more cool stuff. Uh, let's get something moderately heavy. Let's get this. I can pick this up. And I can break stuff by throwing stuff. Let me try that again. That wasn't very impressive. There we go. Now, is that not fucking amazing? Can I break the legs off this thing? No, oh, it seems you can't. I'm actually surprised about that. Come here, plant. I can't see shit. Ugh. Ooh, this thing is fun to throw. This will go through anything. It's a gigantic garbage can. Oh, there's a person coming. Hold on. Let's go uh, give him a present. Hi. Oh, no, you didn't. There's going to be reinforcements coming. Okay, let me prepare myself. I believe that means a car is going to be coming. Maybe. Oh, yes, there it is. So with the suit system that they introduced, that allows you to switch between all these different modes, strength, cloak, armor, speed, you can do some pretty cool stuff. For example... That is not an example. This is an example. Alright, so there's a guy in a car. I could just shoot him out, but I can also do this. What are you gonna do? Huh? Huh? What are you gonna do? Here, why don't you chop down that tree for me with your gun? Come on, aim a little bit more. There you go. Yes, even the trees are destructible. Ow. You know what? I feel like punching you in the face. <laughs> There's an incredible amount of destructibility. Oh, by the way, did I mention you can get in vehicles? And drive them? And shoot the guns on them? And break trees? And break through all of these things. I just ran through some animals, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Oh god, this thing's gonna blow up. I'm getting out. Ah! Get me out of here! It is incredible. Like, in a world that's in a, you know... In today's world, we're populated with... Corridor shooters and things like that that are incredibly linear and highly scripted. To have this... Just kind of let loose on an island, free to approach in all these different ways, using strength, or stealth, or speed. Destructible environments, and you can get in vehicles and travel pretty much any way you want to get there. I can get to my destination by driving, by running, by swimming if I wanted to. Is really incredible. Do you want some more insane attention to detail? Oh, there's more. Check this out. Oh, that is cool. Yeah, look at this. Not only can you destroy chunks of fence, no, no, no. They individually 
simulate each individual board. So you can actually break off each individual board. Yes. That's right. Not just the top, but also the bottom. They're separate pieces. Like, that that is insane. That is absolutely insane. Oh no, there's more. Oh, there's more. Check this out. This garbage can thing, this garbage bin that I threw. Look at this. The wheels are also actually separate from it. It's not just part of a static object. They actually move around realistically. Look at that. Like, holy shit. Somebody put that in the game. In 2007. Seven years ago. Most games don't even possibly consider doing something like that. It's such a tiny detail. And it takes performance. It actually, you know, eats up resources. So many things in today's games are static. But look at this. <laughs> and this came out seven years ago. My god. It really was ahead of its time. Let's see if I can blow up the vehicle. I think I saw a gas can over here. I wonder if it'll blow up on impact. Nope. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, it is just amazing. Look at this, these individual support beams holding these things up. Break them? Falls down. Everything hinges. Hinges everywhere. Realistic hinges. I mean, look at this. Compare this to the modern military shooter of today. And there's just so much detail on the island. Look at these. Look at these. Look at these cute little bird things. Actual wildlife that moves around. By the way, you can pick them up. Yoink. Look at it. Also, I should warn you, by the way, if you click the wrong button, you kill it. But you can, you can click the right button. Which just puts it down. There you go. I, I put you down somewhere. There you go. Go on the beach. There you go. It's just... It, it's amazing. There's more, by the way. Go into the water. Guess what's in the water? Aside from some of the most incredible... I don't know what you call this. The way the light is reflected underwater. There's, I'm sure there's a name for it. It looks incredible! The crisis water has always looked incredible. And it still does look incredible. By the way, there's crabs! Can you pick the crabs up? I actually don't know. No, I don't think you can. <laughs> look at that! They even move sideways like they actually would. I mean, just holy crap! And again, this came out seven years ago. I am absolutely amazed at the level of detail that's in here. Oh look, a chicken. Come here. We're gonna go on a ride, buddy! Whee! Super chicken. So yeah, looking at this, I guess it's not too surprising why I was so obsessed with the graphics at the time something like this coming out. I hadn't seen anything like it. Yes, this is not a static shelf. Each individual cup and plate is separately simulated. And can break. That was an explosive and I just killed myself. <laughs> Whoops. <clears throat> Which one's my, my save game? This is the one I used. Cutscene! Well, not really. First light. Title screen. Yeah. Binoculars! It 
really is incredible. Let me load a slightly later save game. One where it's more daylight. There we go, this is fine. Yes, you can even shoot off the treads. Freaking beautiful. What if I can blow it up by throwing stuff at it? Not sure how much damage that does. You can blow cars up, of course, as you probably expect. Could punch it until it explodes, I suppose. Well, anyway. So, yes, there used to be a time I was obsessed with graphics. I still am, to a certain degree. I really like graphics. It's cool. I mean, a lot of people laugh at seeing, like, tech demos and whatnot when people put out that stuff. Game companies, you know, it's like, well, what about the gameplay? And, you know what? They're kind of right. A lot of games are high on flash and low on substance, no doubt about that. What the hell? I just got stuck in there. Boom! Kapow! Yeah, a lot of games are high on flash and low on substance. There's no doubt about that, so it's understandable. When people are kind of annoyed or just find it laughable, when you see a tech demo come out and you go, look, there's an amazing looking game, and the gameplay is going to be boring and generic. Wonderful. <laughs> Beautiful. So it's understandable, but at the same time... I really, really think graphics are cool. There's something about them. There's something about just the raw power of a graphics card. Pumping away and a CPU and all of that. Just lots of data, the highest resolution textures, super high poly models, anti-aliasing and, you know, ambient occlusion. There's just something about all of that that's really cool. Just mimicking real life on a computer. There's something about that I just found really, I find really fascinating. It's very cool. I'm not as obsessed about graphics nowadays, though. I'm certainly not going to buy a $2,000 plus dollar computer, probably. Well, I mean, I might, if I have money to burn. But, I still have a lot of respect for graphics. You know, the funny thing is, I didn't even like this game that much. Don't get me wrong, the graphics were amazing. Absolutely amazing, but the funny thing is, back when I originally started playing it, it was... Disappointing for a couple reasons. Well, one is that it didn't run very well. Not because it was unoptimized, but again, because I couldn't really run it on the highest settings with a, even the best computer of the time, basically. It just it ran pretty poorly, between 25 and 30 FPS, I believe. Bordering on unplayable for an FPS. Also, I had some other weird issues, which are probably a symptom of my... having Vista, I suppose. Uh, oh, by the way, I should mention the reason I had Vista is not because I thought Vista seemed super awesome, but because this game... Well, in my pursuit of amazing graphics, I wanted to make sure I could turn on everything a game had to offer. And this game was using DirectX 10. I think it was one of the first to use DirectX 10, really. And, of course, XP did not and has never supported DirectX 10, so at the time, Vista was the only operating system that actually supported DirectX 10. And, of course, the 8800 GTX also supported DirectX 10, so, yeah, that's why I went with Vista. I wanted DirectX 10. Simple as that. But I had some other strange issues too. I remember in almost every in almost every cutscene within this game, the dialogue was completely out of sync with the time that the lips were moving. The dial the dialogue was just completely out of sync with what was happening in the scene in all of the cutscenes, and I don't know why, and I never figured out why. Like that persisted after multiple patches for the game, and I made sure to update my audio drivers from my motherboard <clears throat> um, as much as possible. I was using onboard audio at the time. Everything was up to date. I don't know what the hell was wrong with that, but it was horribly out of sync. Completely out of sync. Not slightly. I mean, like, seconds out of sync. What the hell's going on with that Jeep? 
Dunno. So yeah, it didn't run very well. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what the hell? A geyser of water. Looks like he got stuck under there. He needs some help there. Let's see if we can back this thing up. Nah, it seems pretty well stuck. Also, it's got no tread, so it's kind of hard to move. Get out of there. I don't think I can destroy the dock. No, it's... Oh, shit, it's gonna blow up. some point. It's probably gonna kill me when it does. Yep. <laughs> so it had a hell of a lot of issues. Or I had a hell of a lot of issues with it. Wasn't running very well. Cutscenes were horribly out of sync. And you know what? It's funny. Nowadays I don't play that many shooters. Because I find them pretty boring. And the thing is, at the time, even seven years ago in 2007 when I was a hell of a lot younger, I was actually starting to feel that at the time. There's an incredible amount of destructibility in the environments and openness to everything, and it looked amazing, but at the same time, at its heart, it's a shooter. The main point of the game is shooting stuff and killing things and blowing things up, and you know what? I was finding that kind of boring. So, yeah. It was kind of a disappointment, but not because it was bad, just because, well, it turns out it wasn't really what I was looking for. In my pursuit of extreme graphics, I'd purchased a computer that was far more expensive than I should have bought. And also highly unstable, most likely due to Vista. And it wasn't even the kind of game that I really wanted to play that much, it turned out. Kind of funny. Yep. So, there you go. Little nostalgia trip into a very important game in my life. Yeah. A lot of fond memories of Crisis. Fond of the graphics and just what was going on around the time that it came out and my obsession with it. And then also memories of the crushing disappointment when it ran like crap on my computer even though I'd paid so much money for it. And also the realization that it wasn't really the kind of game that I really wanted to play that much. But you live and you learn. Also helped me to help me to learn that graphics don't equal a good game. I was focused so much on the graphics, I wasn't thinking about the gameplay too much. But for most games, I want to emphasize that most, not all, but for most games, the graphics really aren't the main important thing. It's usually about something else. Often the gameplay, sometimes something else. Maybe it's just the story. Or the overall experience. Of course, graphics play a part in the overall experience, no doubt about that. But yeah. Graphics are cool. They're very cool. But they're also usually not the most important thing. And I think playing this game helped me realize that. So even though it's a game world that I don't really feel like doing much in, because I don't find it terribly interesting to play, it's still just fascinating to look at all the care and craft that's gone into it, to making this absolutely amazing looking game with an incredible amount of detail and destructibility in the environments. The likes of which have not often been seen, even seven years later. So, let's get to a vantage point. Let's go to a rock or something. And let's just look out in the incredible view. Let me find somewhere to get up. I can jump super far, but not that far. Can I actually get up there? Maybe. Eh. I don't think that's going to work. Objective updated. Yeah, I think there's enemies that way. Uh, oh, here we go. Super speed! Do 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 do. Ah, I can get up here. Or maybe not. No, no, I definitely can. 
Come on. Not a lot of air control. You know, that's not a very good view. Let's go out here. God, look at this vegetation. It's incredible. It moves out of the way as you rustle through the forest. Here we go. Let me frame this nicely. <laughs> what the hell are they doing? Are they practicing their... Crouching maneuvers? I just imagine they come around the corner of that rock and they both shoot each other. Like, oh my god, I thought you were an enemy! Oh my god, what the hell are they doing? <laughs> oh, silly AI. Anyway. So there you go. That is... Crisis. It's incredibly beautiful.